Anyway, I'll just do uh, the quick one line, what it takes to be a man or woman of, uh, what it takes to be authentic. Most of us try to be authentic. That's like putting, can I do that here? That's like yeah, you can do frosting. In. Oh, yeah, okay. Go That's ahead. like putting frosting on cow dung and thinking it'll go down well. The path to authenticity for us human beings is to be authentic about my inauthenticity. And that is awesome for the people you're leading. And nobody wants to do that, but if you watch people when they do that, you admire them. But we don't learn that. No, I want to. I want to put my best foot forward and show myself as a blah 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 blah. Boy, does that not work? <laughs> my, the what I've learned in my now old age is that people know anyhow. <laughs> so I don't think I. And I've now learned I don't really fool. I thought I was good at it too. Damn it. Okay. At <laughs> any rate, this again. Sorry for the contextual framework. The four aspects. This is going to be very won't probably mean much to anybody. Sorry about that. All you need to get is that these four things create a context that we say, once mastered, leads you being a leader and exercising leadership effectively as your natural self-expression, whatever those four things are. One is leader and leadership as linguistic abstractions, which, when mastered, leaves you free to be and free to act. So now I'm going to interrupt. Werner, if we get involved in this, we're never going to get done. Yeah, okay, uh, I agree. Skip to okay. the next. Leader and leadership is phenomena. Leader and leadership is concept. Leader and leadership is terms. And then finally, the two, as the two kinds of ontological constraints, perceptual constraints, and functional constraints. Mike, I think this is running out of battery power. Uh -oh. uh, uh, we're going to go past that and past that. So, what we share with you may be of interest and even provoke you into discussing it with your friends, colleagues, and family. But, unless you discover it for yourself, as a big, big, big flag in this uh, course, unless you discover it for yourself, what we share with you will not make any difference for you. So, I can learn from Professor Hennessy and I can use what I learned from Professor Hennessy to discover what he taught me for myself. And this whole leadership course is based on no transfer of knowledge, only using whatever gets presented as an opportunity for the participants in the course to discover it for themselves. And if they don't do that, nothing worthwhile happens. And discovering doesn't mean memorizing it. It literally means discovering the phenomenon in their own lives. Yeah, I would guess that most people in the room have discovered something that they discovered for themselves something they learned. And I, w I would almost bet that your experience in doing so is kind of like mine. It was like, wow! Whereas when I learned it, it was interesting and you know provocative and all those wonderful things, but I'm like, wow! So we want to get to, as we call it, opening the refrigerator door and finding the Grand Canyon in there. Does that, work, does that happen ever in that interim period uh, when you have the break in classes? I'm sorry, say it again. Does that kind of discovery ever happen in the interim period when you take a break from classes? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you three on and then the three off and three back on. So that kind of discovery might happen in the middle? Yeah, that's right. Oftentimes it's in uh, the groups working together during the breaks between the class sessions. And a lot of it gets happens in the two days where we're <coughs> off between the three on, two off, three on. Yeah. And we hope to God it happens in class from time to time, because if you get it, and, oh, wow, then it kind of opens up that possibility for me. Yeah, I understand this. I have a grasp of it conceptually, but I didn't get it like that guy got it. It didn't knock me back yet. Maybe I could discover this for myself. Yeah. So let me, let me just say something, because we're not going to cover it, but it is 
One of the f interesting phenomenon about this course and the way we do it is that we found that the more people are in the classroom and the more heterogeneous they are, the more transformation that takes place. Now that's astounding. And the, the most we've ever had in the room is 330 oh. in Panchagani, India so far, but we're looking to get it to 500 and then maybe 800. It, you know, I remember the CEO who was unhappy that he got a teenager in his group. <laughs> uh, and so that's what I mean by more diversity from housewives to teenagers to CEOs, high powered consultants. The more we have of that, the more transformation, the more learning, the more discovering that goes on. The other thing is the more people there are in the room who are sharing in the front of the room, the more of all of that that goes on. Absolutely stunningly surprising. And it's very hopeful because it means we can do it and we think we can do it easily with 500 and probably 1,000 people. And in the next couple of weeks, not weeks, next couple of years, we're going to be able to do that. Well, the small groups are still the same size if you have 500 in the class than if you have 300 in the class. Okay, the claim is based on 11 years of experience in leading our leadership course. We're, sorry to be rumbling fast, but if we read together, it goes very fast. We see that although the content of the course is powerful, or at least we think it's powerful, uh, what leaves the participants being leaders and exercising leadership effectively as their natural self-expression is actually discovering for themselves what we present in the course. In short, an epistemological Mike likes this, so it's all over the place. It. I apologize. In short, an epistemological mastery, what we call a from the stands mastery of a subject leaves one knowing. And an ontological mastery and on the court mastery of a subject leaves one being. Oh boy. Of course, when one is a leader, then knowledge is power. Yeah. Once you dwell in the world of then knowledge becomes something more powerful than mere knowing. The, the foundation for being a leader and exercise leadership effectively, integrity, we would say you can forget about having integrity until any out of integrity occurs for you as a diminution of yourself. And you'll see Mike speak about that in some detail a little uh, later. If I get finished quickly, authenticity. Authenticity begins with being authentic about your inauthenticity. This is startling for most people. Being committed to something bigger than yourself. Heroes are ordinary people who are given being in action by something bigger than themselves. And true leaders are heroes. They fit that description. Boy, that's great. That's good news for me because I sure qualify as ordinary. So let me, just, let me just say for people, I have a bad rep on this thing, because people think that all I want companies to do is maximize the value of the stock. First of all, that's false. That's not what I ever said. But I guarantee you, if you're talking about maximizing the right value, which is the total value firm, if that's all you're doing, you won't maximize value. You've got to be committed. The company has to be, the firm has to be committed to something bigger than itself that will light people up and cause them to be attracted to your organization, passionate about it. They'll find something in what you're committed to, the company is committed to, that satisfies them, lights them up, and excites them. And that's a huge missing component of what's going on out there in the world, and it's this one. Okay, and finally, the fourth one is being caused in the matter. Richard and I already discussed that. We'll move right along. Uh, let's go. Oh, come on, Werner. Let's see. Well, this is this is a lack of integrity, and we see the unworkability it causes. Okay, great. <laughs> while there are four ways of being to constitute the foundation for being a leader, and while the contextual framework is central to being a leader and exercising leadership effectively as your natural self-expression, without integrity, as far as we can tell, none of it works. It's all interesting, wonderful, exciting, blah 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 blah. But on the court, it loses its power when, when integrity is lacking. I've been, by the way, I've been, in, I've been with Mike Ware in a talk in business school. It's taken us a full three hours to do complete justice to what it is to be a man or woman of integrity. As integrity is constituted 
in being a leader in the effective exercise of leadership. Michael do, what Mike will do today is to share enough of this new model of integrity for you to have an opportunity, if you choose to use that opportunity, to discover for yourself the power of integrity as it's constituted in being a leader and exercising leadership effectively as your natural self-expression. Michael? The law of integrity. Integrity is defined in the dictionary as the state of being whole, complete. By the way, looking back on my life, I realize how far out of integrity I was. <laughs> And I can only begin to dream of how much better my life had been if I hadn't been such a shit. <laughs> and all of my colleagues know that very well. <laughs> my ex co <laughs> I'm sorry? And your wife? Oh, yes. Uh, two of them that are divorced. <laughs> but my current partner is great. <laughs> okay. Our law of integrity. Mike, finish reading the first paragraph, please. It's important. Integrity is defined in the dictionary as the state of being whole, complete, unbroken, unimpaired, sound, in perfect condition. By the way, when we use the word integrity, it has almost nothing to do with what you think it means. So just set that aside and be open to something else. And if you take even a little bit of it or go to read about it in the, in the slides with you, it will result in profound changes in your life. What we'd like you to set aside is that integrity is about doing good instead of doing bad. In other words, it's a value. That's what we'd like you to set aside for the moment. Because instead of being normative, we're going to assert that integrity is a positive phenomenon. Okay, go on, Mike. Positive and a pheno positive phenomenon, not in the sense that it's good, but it just is. Does that make any sense? to people. It's not that it's good. It's not what positive means. It just means that it describes something that, as it exists in yeah, the like world. Like gravity is a, a positive phenomenon, just the way things are. It's neither good nor bad. It's just like that. Go on. Mike. So our law of integrity states, as integrity being whole and complete declines, workability declines. And as workability declines, the opportunity for performance declines. The easiest example is take a bicycle wheel and pull a couple of spokes out. Now as you use it, it's going to get out of round. And if you pull more spokes, eventually it's going to collapse. It, its workability will go down, and it may stop working entirely. That's exactly what's going on in your life, and you don't know it. I know I just insulted you, but I wanted your attention. <laughs> we're broken, we're impaired, we're unsound. <laughs> that's right. Perfect. Right, well, that's exactly right. At least you're right. worse. At least you're worse. OK, now, we're going to clarify that a little. Thus, the maximization of whatever performance measure you choose requires integrity. Because if you've got something that's unworkable, like yourself, or the bicycle wheel, it's not going to produce a high level of performance. So that applies to the quality of your life, to your effectiveness in life, including your effectiveness of being and acting when being a leader and exercising leadership. Attempting to violate the law of integrity, which will <coughs> generates painful consequences just as surely as attempting to violate the law of gravity. You know, you jump off a four-story building without a safety device and a parachute or something like that, it's going to hurt when you hit the ground. So, put simply and somewhat overstated, without integrity, nothing works. Now, I've got it stuck. Think of this as a heuristic. If you or our organization operate in life as though this heuristic is true, performance will increase dramatically. And the impact on performance is huge, anywhere in the range of 100 to 500 percent. Okay. So